Hey guys, Excoundrel here. Welcome to the channel if you're new. For any of my current subscribers, this is a review of Walson Lords of Mayhem. Uh, I'm going to be talking about it from my perspective. Um, I haven't really talked about my, my gaming love outside of the, what I do on the channel, but my all-time favorite genre is ARPG, which is an action RPG. I have over 8,000 hours in ARPGs across my gaming lifetime, across Diablo 2, across Path of Exile, across Diablo 3, Grim Dawn, Torchlight, any ARPG that has existed, I've usually tried it out to see what it's like. I am in love with the genre. Uh, and that's why I was excited when I saw Walson Lords of Mayhem, because a lot of people were hyping it up as the next ARPG that everyone was going to get involved with. However, you may have realized and may have seen from online, it didn't quite go as expected and the launch was not particularly positive. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about the bad side of Walson. I'm going to talk about it in terms of what has been mentioned, uh, what I feel is definitely an issue. I would love to go through uh, everything that I can, but I obviously want to keep this video as short as physically possible. But let's start with the bad things. Uh, the first of which is obviously the launch. It had an abysmal launch. The online servers went down. Everybody that had bought it to play with their friends could not. They, across the entire launch weekend, when people were off from school, off from work, the servers were completely dead. Uh, and then it, even worse than that, people ended up losing their progress. So obviously, when people came back, they were looking for refunds. They were trying to get a refund off Steam, even though they played more than two hours. There was a lot of movements to try and force the devs to give refunds out. There was huge Twitter backlash. There was huge Reddit backlash. Everybody was hating on the game, generally because the launch was so pathetic. Now, I do feel bad for the devs because they were probably in a situation where they didn't realize how many people would be trying to play their game. They probably thought that it was going to be a fairly low-key launch and it would build up interest over time. They just genuinely did not prepare for the number of players that ended up trying to get access to the game, which is a positive and negative for them. Obviously, the interest for the game was sky high, but the negative was that the launch was so abysmal that it put a lot of people off. It wasn't just the launch that caused issues, though. There are bugs for days. This is a 1.0 release. This is not early access. This is a fully-fledged release game. And oh my living daylights, there are bugs coming out of the wazoo. Um, let's start off, start off with some of the more obnoxious ones. Uh, this is the skill tree. I will come into the skill tree later on. I actually think it's a really well-designed skill tree. I think it finds the... It, it takes obvious inspiration from Path of Exile. Um... And I'll talk about inspiration a bit more in a second. It takes obvious inspiration from Path of Exile, but it manages to simplify things in a way that is very easy to understand. All of the individual node areas definitely give Lou if of a certain type of playstyle. It is quite easy to wrap your head around this once you just read through some of the passives and also figure out that spinning the wheels are pretty cool and you can kind of link your passives in different ways depending on what you want your build to look like. It is a cool skill tree. It is one of the best designed ARPG skill trees that I've worked with. I think it's got some fantastic passives in there. There's a lot of really good thought that has gone into this. The bugs, however, were that some of the passives just don't work. Some of the actual notable passives apparently just don't have an effect. They are not impacting the skills in game. There is some issues with multiplicative and additive spell damage not working correctly, so people are just not getting the maximum Im impact from their spells. There are just straight up mathematical errors. I'm talking about Bane of Tyranny, a node which checks which increases the um, damage you do, do by 50 times your equipped shield's block chance. And just for context, the base shield block chance is 20. So at minimum, from a not even a notable node, you are getting 1,000% damage increase. Um, and then you have, it's supposed to be 0 0.5, as you can see from, from this one here. Um, so these are, these are 0 0.5, but this random one is still 50, so that's still a bug. And... And I'll talk about why that's an issue in a second, but obviously this is just completely broken. I'm using it because it's completely broken. I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, so yeah, there are massive issues when it comes to the nodes. Combat is buggy. Um, enemies drop to the floor. Enemies don't have we any enemies' hitboxes don't seem to work. Enemies randomly die and then just don't go away. Uh, enemies disappear through the floor and come back. Um, followers just bug out constantly. There is huge issues with followers. Um, there is no force move button, so when I'm trying to move around in groups of enemies, I just end up going like this all over the place and can't actually attack anything. It's it's actually just catastrophic, some of the things that, that are plaguing this game as what is supposed to be a 1.0 release. 
Um, there is also a huge issue, if I'm going to show you correctly, and this is going to serve as a warning for anyone that hasn't got this far. Dark Market and Transmutation Forge are completely bugged. So bugged to the fact that if you actually use these, um, if you use these, uh, these endgame resources and actually use, try and, um, do items in them or whatever their functions are, you actually brick your game. You can't log in anymore. It is dead until they, pa they patch it. And the reason this is an issue is because although the devs' communication has been pretty good, they have generally really been saying kind of wishy-washy non-committal stuff they have recently said that they can only hotfix once a week because of the server partners um that is catastrophic as well uh like hot fixing once a week when you've got this many bugs on release is going to make or break your game and unless you launch the biggest hot fix that you'll ever see in any game ever next week there is going to be a huge backlash the other negative that I want to talk about is the story. Now, there are positives and negatives to the story. Um, some things in the story are fantastic. Act 2 is one of the best story campaigns I've played through from any RPG. It's, it's charming. Uh, and it has a really, really fun uh, sort of engaging storyline. The scenery when you get to the end of Act 2 is fantastic. The boss fight is just incredible with great mechanics. And then you get to Act 3. What a steaming pile of shit that act is. I mean, I can't even say it any other way. It is absolutely garbage. The boss fight is lazy. Like, the end boss fight... Act 3 is the end act, by the way. The end act boss fight is lazy as hell. The story is garbage. Um, which, by the way, the story was pretty nondescript up until that point. I wouldn't say it was super good. It wasn't super bad either. I definitely love the story in Act 2, though. Um, and then the ending is something else. I cannot even describe that ending. It is disastrously bad. Um, and finally, one of the negative points that I, I guess you could swing it or miss it when it comes to being a negative point or not. You, I talked a lot about the inspiration that they have obviously taken from other games. For instance, this is heavily inspired by Path of Exile. Um, there is some inspiration from Diablo in this game, specifically Diablo 3, especially when it comes to uh, level design. Uh, I'm looking at the Heaven or the uh, the, the Primark, whatever they're called, uh, level designs, as well as the, the enemy designs. There are a lot of enemies that are essentially direct rip-offs of Diablo 3 enemies. There are wall breakers, which... Uh, raise their maces above their head in a very slow and very deliberate uh, ground slam technique. They exist in Diablo. There is the leapers, which are essentially almost carbon copies. There, there, there is essentially a huge number of uh, enemies in this game that are basically ripped directly from Diablo 3. Um, you'll know when you play through it, if you've played Diablo 3, which ones I'm talking about. Uh, but essentially... Obviously, things like spiders and bats, they're just animals, but but there are a lot of things that are basically just Diablo 3 units, and uh, uh, and it's pretty shameless, actually. They are almost identical in every way. I personally don't think it's that bad, because it's just for me, it's just monsters at the end of the day, and I don't really pay that much attention to them other than just killing them. But obviously, there are definitely issues when you're ripping off uh, enemies from, from other franchises. That's the bad. But I have 50 or 60 hours in this game, and it's not just because I like ARPGs, and it's not because I wanted to create a guide. I have 50 or 60 hours in this game because there are actually a lot of positives about Walson, and I'm going to go into them now because I think we should really talk about them. Okay, the positives of Walson. I want to start with the fact that I think it is a really good middle ground between Diablo 2, Diablo 3, and Path of Exile. I've already talked about the skill tree being fun and complex, but not so complex that you get completely lost on the Path of Exile skill tree, for instance. I like the fact that you can allocate your own stats. Uh, you have the ability to reset everything for a cost. You can't just do it for free, but also you don't have to create a com completely new character if you mess up. I love the fact that you can only create a base character, either male or female, and then you can build that character to be whatever you want it to be. It's based on usually based on what weapons you're holding. Uh, if I can actually get to my inventory, it's usually based on what weapons you're holding for what skills you can use, and that allows you to shape your character in any way. And there's loads of different and fun combinations you can do with the willpower and rage balancing. Um, some skills use willpower, some skills use rage, some skills generate rage. Um, there's plenty of awesome things that you can do uh, with with this game, 
because of the flexibility of this single character build, plus everyone gets four unique transformations to choose from. Um, you can eventually unlock all of them. I went for this dude to begin with, but just look how bloody cool he is. And you get a load of cool skills. It's generally just a really, really, really well thought out thing. Even though those transformations are absolutely useless and really only serve to make you invincible, um, I'm sure they'll change that in the future. The actual concept of transformations is always really positive. The skill system is fantastic. You unlock skills through things called interacts, and then you can use those skills in any combination that you want. Uh, you can have up to six unlocked skills when you finally unlock the fifth skill slot. And all of the skills use a Diablo 3-like rune system. But instead of those runes being very arbitrary and essentially... I didn't say that word correctly, but whatever. Uh, instead of those runes being essentially really basic and not allowing you to have much flexibility, the runes that you can have for a lot of the skills in this game completely transform the way that skill is played. They even make that skill the center point of builds. There are a lot of really awesome runes that you can unlock, and you have to level up the skills to get there, of course, but it, it essentially gives you a huge amount of customization to the skills that you want, and it does feel like your choices are meaningful because you have a certain amount of modifier points Points, and a lot of the runes cost a different amount of modifier points. For instance, I have eight maximum right now, and I spent eight on some fairly expensive ones. But Bleeding Edge is an example where you throw an axe, it spins around you. It's a very short initial, uh, I think it only lasts about one second when you initially have it. Um, and it doesn't move from the location that you cast it. Well, I've now caused it to attach to me and also continue to sp uh, spin for four seconds after being thrown. Um, so essentially it now becomes something that circles my character, changes the way that the game plays, actually makes the skill really useful. Uh, it is generally a really fantastic uh, a change. There's loads of that that you can do across all of your skills that you have. Um, and that, you know, that goes across the spells, the rogue skills, the hunter, marksman skills, as well as the warrior skills. There's loads of mix and matching you can do and then lots of different changes you can make using the rune system. It is a well-executed rune system. Take note, Diablo 3, this is how you do it correctly. It, it, there's a lot of positives there. There are other things that I really love about this game as well. Um, the one of which is the end game itself. There's lots of to do here. You, I can't be bothered to go through all of the individual things, but essentially you upgrade the city that you're in and you get access to new things and you, you generate resources by doing what is essentially... that They're basically Diablo Greater Rifts at the end of the day. Um, but that's really cool and I love that part of it and it def definitely gives a cool kind of feeling end game, which I hope they expand on in the future. Um, the feel of the combat, despite the bugs, I haven't played a game that felt this way since Diablo 2. It's not as blendery as Path of Exile, where if you don't, if you have a good build, you'd literally just rip through everything. It definitely feels like there's some thought and combo that needs to go into when I'm approaching, um, you know, uh, packs of mobs. Um, it's definitely not a situation of just clicking one button and running through them. You know, I'm comboing skills together to make sure that I'm getting the maximum damage. Uh, it definitely, the combat just feels nice. I can't really explain it. It's just got a good feel about it. When Once you get past the bugs, sometimes it can feel a bit cumbersome. Sometimes the bugs get annoying. But when you're just when you're using the skills because i think some of the skills are really well designed it just feels fun uh you know i can find myself just running through a, 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 a what they what do they call it not a grift an expedition and just kind of the time just blends away because i'm having so much fun chaining together my cool skills like my uh this thing that pulls the enemies into me i've got this this jump that brings all the enemies to to me i got obviously this shout which is kind of useless but um no, let's just get off that Obviously, I've got the shout, and then I have the the bleeding edge skill, which is really cool, and it follows me around like this. So the skills just feel cool, and I really like the way that they're done. Um, the other thing that I like is the itemization in this game. Um, as far as I'm aware, you know, there is mostly working around these legendary and rare items, which have generic, you know, stats applied to them. Um, what I what I like about this is that it, it diverts away from things like Diablo. Uh, and things like Path of Exile, where in Diablo there are, there are set items, and I actually hope this game never adds set items, or at least never adds any game-defining set items, because in Diablo, everybody played the same thing, usually. There was very, very, very limited uh, um, 
diversion of builds not only because certain runes were just the best for certain seasons but also just certain uh set pieces were the best for certain seasons and just everybody who wanted to get to high level rifts played the same thing uh in path of exile there were certain builds that if you just weren't playing a certain build you were never going to conquer the high level content uh, and I, I will dive into path of exile for any at the end if anyone's interested but essentially with path of exile there is just too much going on now in the current seasons there was just too much to do and you feel like you you half-ass everything and you don't have fun because you're not making the most out of everything that you've got and you have to invest so many hours to get through all of the content that they've added and i know sometimes choice is good but there is too much choice in path of exile either you grind delve or you grind maps and if you don't have like the one of the best builds in in the current meta you're just never going to get to the end game because the end game is so punishingly difficult that if you don't have a good build you're just never going to complete it whereas in this game i feel like you can have fun with whatever build you concoct because you can still get through certain level expeditions and it's a bit like Diablo in the sense that yeah okay you can come up with your own build yes okay you might be limited by that build at some point but I feel like there is a good number of viable builds that can take you to a high level in this game at least from what I've seen from streaming and I love the fact that itemization really comes down to good stats like good stats on items you're rolling for stats you're trying to find the perfect stats it's not just looking out for a certain unique it's not just looking out for a certain set piece it's about finding the right stats for you for your build that's what i like about it because it adds much much more grind potential because sometimes when i find the right unique or set item in, in path of x or diablo i just kind of give up but now i'm constantly looking to improve and obviously i'm not max level yet so i've got lots of improving to do but you know i'm always reading through every piece of gear i've got to see if it slightly upgrades on the on the on the item that i've got at this point in time and then you have the socketing as well which is fantastic and there are these uh unique items in the game but the, you know that they're more like sort of build defining unique items rather than just being absolutely necessary for certain builds and that might change over time we're obviously very early on into the meta but that's just the feel that i get i definitely feel like people are running with with legendary and rare items because they just offer the correct form of stats for them and that's really fantastic so that's another thing that i really like about this it doesn't it feels like you can really have a lot of unique and like sort of i really like one of the most rewarding things in arpgs is like i i made this build i found something that was really good um yeah okay i used the base template but i've had some of my own twist on it and that's what i feel the itemization does in this game yeah okay i'm following quinn 69's bleeding edge build but i am trying to find my own way with the itemization you know i know which stats to prioritize but oh do i want a little bit more of that stat or do i want a little bit more of this stat oh maybe i can add this unique and see how that changes things up that's what i feel the feel i get from Molson. that's the that's the the real love for arpgs that i have it's just coming down to essentially finding something that you love and trying to, to to iterate and create on it so that that's how i feel like i, I feel like despite all the, the negatives this game has so much potential because of the way it makes me feel when i play it less so than anything else it just has a good feel to it it takes a lot of the really positive things from the other games and and combines them into this one mesh of a perfect blend of path of exile diablo 2 and diablo 3 yeah there are things i think they could have done better but I feel like they really built on the weaknesses and specifically built on the weaknesses of Diablo 3. You know, if this was Diablo 3 and it was as clean as Diablo 3, oh my god, that game would have been 10 out of freaking 10. Uh, but obviously it's not. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I feel about Walson. I, I, this is obviously wasn't sponsored or anything. I, I, this is just because I've been playing the game and I really wanted to talk about it. Let me know what you think. Do you think that I have covered everything? Do you think there are things that you, you wished uh, I had covered? What do you feel about the game? Um, I'm going to keep playing it, I think. It's a game that I feel has got a lot of potential, and if the developers can actually get their hot fixes out and sort their crap out, then I think we could really see a positive gaming experience come from this. Um, if they don't, then yeah, okay, I'm probably not going to play it for that much longer. But I'm hoping they get their crap together and we can, we can really see uh, a cool game come out of this because I genuinely think it has the potential. I'm probably not going to run about Path of, Ex Path of Exile. I do play that game a lot. I'm just a bit salty. I'm like an old, I'm like a very old salty Path of Exile gamer. Um, but if you ever feel like talking to me about it, get to me, get, contact me on Twitter, Scoundrel. I will happily talk about Path of Exile till the cows come home. Played that game to death. Uh, all right, guys, I will see you soon. Thank you for uh, thank you for watching.